Okay, here we are. Michael Steele, do you think that a Republican will challenge Trump for the nomination in 2020? Uh, the, the short answer is no, but there will be probably um, some, someone like a Ben Sass, uh, a senator who will... Uh, who has been very critical of the president for quite some time. Uh, and now, whether he gets into a direct... What about a bull moose for... party? You well, know, I mean, you what? Know, you no, know, in 1912, I, honest, not that I have to tell sentence. you about 1912, no, but, but in true. 1912, the Republican yeah, Party yeah, split. Yeah. Teddy uh, Roosevelt. If, if, if 2018 goes the way that some in the party feel it may, uh, given how the public is, is really kind of roiling with all the Trump stuff, uh, yeah, you could see someone step up uh, to try to save the party for 2020 in some fashion. The fact that Roosevelt didn't win, though, with the popularity yeah. he so that's, had, that's shows it. you it, though, difficult the difficulties that even then. Yeah. Yeah. Like yeah. John Kasich right. 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 John Kasich, him? John Kasich right. 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 That's what I'm saying. Somebody yeah. like John Kasich. Well, I mean, but like some... We... <laughs> it's funny. When you, when you watch the liberal news channels, it's all Republicans like you and Nicole Wallace and Charlie Sykes and Rick Wilson. You're like, oh, you know, Steve Schmidt. It's all all we see is right. great Republicans, <laughs> smart Republicans, reasonable, like, reasonable yeah. Republicans. <laughs> right? I mean, you, you, you'd think that was the whole party that's if the, only you watch the MSNBC. Ninety percent of Republicans that's, are still that's with the Trump. game both of the networks play. Right? Fox sure. has these people who are just this much to the left of center. As right. their as their liberals, and you know the. Uh, and MSNBC has collected all six remaining sane Republicans. Richard Clark, what would be your strategy for dealing with Kim Jong Un? Talk to him. You know, the president said today, as people said today, we've lost our patience with this man. They haven't sat down at the table with him. No one has. You're right. Uh, sit down at the table. He's doing this because he wants something. Rodman wants something. does it. <laughs> yeah, well, he's the only one. <laughs> oh, really? Yeah, you're right. You know. Right. Yeah, and Rodman, Trump, what's the difference, you know? <laughs> but, 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 yeah. <laughs> That's, that's, that's not do, fair to Dennis Rodman. He's got to do karaoke. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, should congressmen get a housing stipend like Jason Chavitz suggested this week? Okay, he's a congressman from Utah. He's retiring. He's retiring. Yeah. And he said, I can't afford it. Uh, he was sleeping in his office. I mean, they make, what do they make? 178000 a year. And they, and they all share places, have, too. Yeah. It's, yeah, because mean, they have to keep two homes. And, yeah. and he's yeah. not going to go and get a lucrative contract with some television network, and he'll have cashed in. But I'm sure, I'm sure, I'm the, pub, I'm sure the public can be very him. supportive of that, right? The idea of, yes. <laughs> of giving yeah. additional, with additional yeah. money right? <laughs> well, to, our, to our members of Congress. Yeah. We're always lecturing poor Americans to live within their means. Yeah, 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 exactly. <laughs> and to <laughs> go without health care. And that's a bold mistake. And Chaffetz, Chaffetz is the very asshole who said maybe you shouldn't buy a cell phone and you should buy health care instead because a health care plan annually costs Chaffetz about as much as a cell phone. Chaffetz is also the one who went on television at least five times and said he had to distance himself from Donald Trump after the Access Hollywood tapes and couldn't possibly look his 15-year-old daughter in the eye and say that he was supporting this guy and then turned around and voted That's for him. Right. Yeah. So, so fuck is... that guy. Right. Okay. <laughs> I didn't say that. We'll have him on the show, and his uh, Chiron will say, the very asshole. <laughs> uh, Dan, given the way the Trump administration is trending on gay rights, do you feel confident telling LGBT youth that it gets better? Yeah, I mean, he was supposed to be pretty good on this subject, and Ivanka was supposed to be a moderating influence, but it doesn't look too good on that score. No, it's it? a, there hasn't been a great, large, sort of thunderbolt moment uh, with Trump attacking LGBTQ civil rights, but there's been a lot of little cuts. And it's kind of the death of the thousand cuts that we're worried about. Just today, Trump appointed to the U.S. Uh, foreign Aid Agency, I can't remember the name of it, um, to work on gender equality and gender issues, someone who's an anti-trans rights activist. So in the same way that he appoints Betsy DeVos, who opposes public education, to head the Department of Education, he's opposing, appointing people who have control over things that are going to impact LGBT Americans, all these anti-LGBT pickets, including his first pick, Pence. I, I, by the way, I saw a headline in the New York Times. It was like on page 14, like buried in the middle of the paper. I never heard anybody else talk about it. Shows you where we are, mm -hmm. perspective-wise. It said, cuts to aid funding could cost a million lives. But they're not American lives, so, you know, page 14, who gives a shit?
Well, but, but, but that's, lives. But that's, that's been... That's and, what, and one of the first executive orders he signed was, again, with the Mexico City rule to roll back federal funding of abortion providers and abortion advisors in developing countries. That's already having a huge impact on women in developing countries and directly impacting their health prospects. And you know who, who was great on that issue? George Bush. Yes. Yeah, very much yeah, so. And very popular uh, in I miss Africa it, and Africa. It, very... <laughs> <laughs> Can I quickly answer the it gets better question and whether we can yes. say that? It gets better because we get out there and we fight to make it better. It doesn't get better by itself. Right. That's, so, that's it. We can still say to we can still say to queer youth, it gets better. We're out here fighting to make it better. Join the fight. We can make it better. Things look pretty dire under George W. Bush, under Ronald Reagan, and we, there, the arc was b t trending positive. Things look pretty dire right now, particularly with the Supreme Court. Yeah. Queer people have the most to lose after women with his appointments to the Supreme Court. So, yes. And this Gorsuch guy yeah. was a liar when yes. he testified, oh, I'm just going to be a neutral umpire calling balls and strikes. He's Scalia. Yeah. He's to the right of Scalia. He's to the right of Scalia. Okay. Caddy Kay, what do you make of the rivalry between Jared Kushner and Secretary of State Rex Tillerson? Uh, you cited him earlier, Rick, as one of the people we can count on to be smart. And, uh, that's amazing where the bar is now, when the head of Exxon is one of the guys. I think increasingly I'm hearing the names Mattis and McMaster more than I'm hearing Tillerson. Look, you know, uh, Jared Kushner went to the Middle East, and it seems that the 36-year-old wonder kid with no experience in foreign policy actually won't bring about peace in the Middle East as what? quickly as he no. thought, <laughs> um, and that he had a hard time with yeah. President yeah. Abbas. And this is where the rivalry stems from, is that the White House wants to have foreign policy inside the well, White I mean, House. Rex, and Rex Tillerson, Tillerson is discovering yeah, that. And, and, and Tillerson, you know, lost his mind last, this past week as well. It, it's made it very clear. He wants to hire his own people. He wants to now close that shop in uh, a little bit more. It so took him till reflect. July took, to lose his mind. Well, yeah, that's true. That's true. But He I has no one in it. the department. Or I used to be it. an assistant secretary of state. I was appointed in February. Yeah, but it's July. They haven't appointed one of them. But but that's but that again, that's not the secretary's fault. That is being held up by the West Wing itself. Yeah, but it's the secretary's fault for waiting till July to get pissed off. Well, that that may be. But true. I think what's pissing him off more is taking orders from Jared Kushner. That would be yes. 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 I mean, ex, he was <laughs> head of Exxon, which of Exxon. is a country. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. a big yeah, country. It is. He's taking orders. He's taking orders from, from, this from the son-in-law. Thank you very much, everybody. Have a great July.